Hello and welcome to another episode of India Detailed. Today's episode is all about the Vedic religion, which is probably the first organized religion of the Indian subcontinent. The roots of this religion lie in the Neolithic age, where man had started using fire and creating stone tools. They were nomads who were afraid of the dark, so they started worshipping fire which expelled the darkness. They were polytheists who worshipped natural forces, which is a characteristic of prehistoric man. Polytheism is also considered as one of the archaic forms of worshipping, so it is also rooted in the Neolithic ages when man was transitioning from a nomad to a farmer. The Vedic religion originates with the Aryans settling in the Saptasindhu region. We can say so because the Rugved mentions these Aryans. And while it does not state who they were and where they came from, it makes it pretty clear that these were the creators of the Vedas. For more details on the Aryans, you can check out episode 2. The pastoral nomadic clans of Northwest India were Vedic Aryans. A branch of these Vedic or Proto-Vedic people migrated to the boundaries of the Indian subcontinent and settled along the river banks of the region. There are no records of when the Aryans came, appeared or migrated there, but probably with the out of Africa human migration, a branch of Homo sapiens started living in the Eurasian steppes and then spread in the adjacent regions. Initially, it was a very materialistic religion with a very utilitarian approach towards supernatural power. The people believed that offering sacrifices to the gods would grant them prosperity. In the Vedic religion, the medium of sacrifice was fire, also known as the Yajna. The Yajna system Agni is said to be the carrier of sacrificial things and he carries people's offerings to the gods like Indra, Varun, Surya, Nasatya and Oshas. Performing a Yajna will get the gods to grant you wealth and prosperity. Different types of sacrifices are to be made like Ghruta which is clarified butter, Soma, water, milk, grain and even flesh. A full meal sacrifice to the gods was certain to win favor. Types of Yajna Gruhya Yajna was a modest sacrificial ceremony conducted in private with minimal audience, minimal sacrifice and modest expectations. On the other hand, Shrauta Yajna was a grand public ceremony with a big audience, a generous sacrifice and high expectations. Varanas The four Varanas were a major part of the Vedic religion and society. Some Varanas were allowed to do Yajan, Yajan, Adhyapan, etc. and the others were restricted. But these rules were flexible, at least in the initial stages. Ashrams The four ashrams were also a major part of the Vedic way of life. Check out episode 4 for more details about this topic. Ruta Ruta is the cosmic order or cosmic law that governs the natural forces. This is why the word Rutam Vachmi stands for the promises made with the cosmic law as a witness. This term is also equivalent to the Persian word Artha. Concept of Deus This term stands for heaven or sky. The Vedic people praised heaven as their father and thus referred to it as Jupiter. The concept shares its similarity with the Roman Jupiter and the Greek Zeus. Samhitas and Brahmans are known as Karmakanda because they consist of information regarding rituals. On the other hand, Upanishads and Aranyakas are called Jnanakanda because they consist of philosophy. There is a possibility that Varuna and Indra may have been real individuals with important positions in their contemporary society. But apart from them, almost every other god is somehow associated with natural forces. There's also no structure or hierarchy of the gods because many gods have many important powers and whenever the Ruchas talk of them, there is henotheism, which means praising just about every god there is. In a stanza, X god is mightiest, but in the next stanza, the same god is dependent on someone else. In fact, the synergy of gods is one of the most interesting characteristics of the Rugved. Agni Approximately 250 suktas are dedicated to Agni, which is why he is considered to be one of the most important gods, perhaps also because he carries offerings to the other gods. He is called Ratnadhatamam and Ghrutaprushtha. Indra Another 250 suktas are dedicated to Indra. Some of the epithets used are Vajrabahu, Sushipra and Somapa. He is said to be addicted to Soma. He is the son of Aditi and Deus, 
separating both of them at his birth. Indra rides a golden chariot. He is called Purandar or the destroyer of fortified cities and Apaneta because he freed water from Vrutra, his arch enemy. Somadev there are 100 sutras dedicated to him. Soma is a type of medicinal plant which is very important in sacrificial rituals. It is said to be found on the mythological Mujavat mountain. Soma yag, the ritual with soma as a sacrifice is considered to be the most prestigious. It also has an Iranian equivalent called the Hauma. Ashwins, 50 suktas are dedicated to these twin gods. Their Greco-Roman equivalent are the Dioscuri brothers. They are the Sushruts or servants of the gods. Ashwin also means horse riders. They have a chariot of 3 wheels. They help sages and are called Madhupa or honey drinkers. Maruta, they are a group of deities. Maruta gan means the ones who shine. They like to wear makeup. Their arrival is followed by rain and therefore they are also associated with stormy weather. They ride dotted horses and carry hand axes along with bows and arrows. Rudra is their father. Surya or the solar pantheon. It consists of Mitra, the one who keeps record of good and bad deeds. Savitru, the one who inspires. Aryaman, the symbol of prosperity. Pushan, the one who does potion. And finally, Vishnu, the one who wishes to fly. The above are all different forms of the sun. Surya has equivalents in the Roman Apollo and the Greek Helios. Varun, he has between 10 to 12 suktas dedicated to him. He is also called Rutagopa. He is the protector of the cosmic laws and has a palace under water. He carries a pash. Rudra, 10 suktas are dedicated to Rudra, also called Proto Shiva. He is the god of medicines. He carries a bow, has braided hair, and wears golden ornaments. The verses of Rugved also convey a sense of fear for his wrath. Aditi, Aditi means entire or akhand. Aditi is also a symbol of Mother Earth. Lakshmi, Lakshma refers to the brand which was used to mark cows. Lakshmi is derived from this Lakshma and is thus a symbol of prosperity and wealth. Saraswati, Saraswati means having many lakes. She is also the goddess of speech. whose voice is the purest sound ushas refers to the dawn ushas sukta is dedicated to her she rides a glowing chariot these are some of the most prominent deities of the vedic pantheon the vedic religion also laid the foundation of the puranic religion which holds the closest resemblance to today's hinduism where lord shiva and vishnu are the central figures rather than indra and agni also the five sects rose from the transition period between the vedic and the puranic religion we shall cover that in later episodes for now let's conclude this episode on the vedic religion hope you found it useful don't forget to like and share this video and do subscribe to our channel and remember history is always in the making